Hey everybody, welcome to a new edition of the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite, I'll be hanging out with you today. And as you can tell from our front slide, we are off into a new series on cell signaling. This is going to be a short one. It's only two, maybe three videos long. So we're gonna make this short and sweet. Today's topic is local versus long distance sing signaling. And no, I am not talking about telephone bills. So as always, here are your objectives for the day. So today's video is going to be pretty vocab heavy. First objective, know the terms signal transduction pathway, local regulator, and hormone. You're going to be ready for Scrabble after this. Next one, compare and contrast local and long distance signaling. And finally, provide a brief overview of the steps of cell signaling. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get on into it. First term to know for the day is cell signaling. What is it? What's it about? It is simple. For cell signaling, we are just talking about a message from outside the cell producing an action inside the cell. One thing to note, in this section talking about cell signaling, whatever the signaling chemical is, the thing that is actually acting on the cell, that thing never enters into the cell itself. It binds to something on the outside and then causes a change inside the cell. So that is cell signaling. Next term for you is a signal transduction pathway. Big words for the day. Let me see if I can make some notes for you. So all it is basically is the steps that convert a received signal to a specific response. We got a cell here. It looks like it is a cell that helps you to smell things. So here's your steps right here. That is our smell molecule. It's like baked bread or whatever that is attaching to a receptor on the cell membrane. All of this mess in here is a signal transduction pathway. And passing this signal along, a bunch of different molecules are going to be touched in the process. As each of those gets touched, it's like passing on the message. So that process of passing the message through the cell is called signal transduction. And then your last vocab word, actually, I don't know if it's the last one, but a local regulator, Another word you need to know. This is just a messenger molecule that influences cells in the vicinity, all right? Now, by the vicinity, I mean that cells that are only one to a couple cells away, and it's going to be a molecule that has an effect directly on those cells. If you look at your top right-hand corner of the diagram there, we have got a neuron passing some signal molecules to a cell that is right next to it. So that would be an example of a local regulator. The molecules are the regulators. Next thing is a hormone. Now, all of you hear about hormones all the time because you're teenagers. Here's how we're gonna define hormone. It's a signal molecule that travels in the circulatory system. Those local regulators don't hop into the bloodstream. They only act on the cells that are right next to them. Hormones, they're actually secreted into the bloodstream so they can travel to wherever their target cell may be. It could be your pituitary gland in your brain secreting a hormone that is actually going to act somewhere down in your calf muscle. So that would be a hormone. And generally, not generally, always hormones or proteins. All right, let's talk about local versus long distance. Things you need to know about local signaling. There's a couple different ways that this can occur. Sometimes there's just direct contact. Two cells are touching each other. They're able to cause a change within each other, and that would be a direct contact signal. Sometimes there are connections. So in some cases, especially with plant cells, they've got little tunnels between the cells that actually allow cytoplasm to pass between the cells. If cytoplasm can pass between the cells, then signals, chemical signals, can also pass between the cells. And then like we had talked about previously, there are local regulators. Two quick examples of local regulators would be a growth factor. There are some cells that secrete growth factors. Those growth factors act on the cells around them, causing them to divide. Cancer is notorious for doing this. A tumor cell can secrete growth factors, causing the cells that are in the local vicinity to grow uncontrollably. Synaptic signaling is another example of this. This would be where you've got two nerve cells next to each other. And the way that nerve cells are set up, you've got like the nerve cell looks something like this, and then our next nerve cell would be right here. The space in between them is called the synaptic cleft. That is that right there. So our electrical signal travels down the length of our nerve cell. When it gets to the end, the terminal end of the nerve cell, it causes this nerve cell to convert this electrical signal into a chemical signal. Those chemical signals 
are sent across, they diffuse across the synaptic cleft to the next nerve cell, which converts that chemical symbol, signal into an electrical one, and the process just continues on down the length of the nerve. So that would be another example of local signaling because you are just working right across that little synaptic cleft. When we are talking about long distance, we are talking about hormones. Now, there are some critical organs or glands in your body that release hormones. You've got your pituitary up in your brain. You've got your thyroid somewhere in your neck. You've got your testes. Um, there are your adrenal glands on top of your kidneys. Your pancreas secretes some hormones. So those would be areas that put out these hormones that are long distance signalers. Now, once the hormone is sent out, it gets into your circulatory system and travels to its target cell. Now, just like all protein complexes, the hormone is specific to the cell that it works on. So once a hormone is sent out, it combines to receptors on the cell, causing a specific response. The cells that receive those hormones are called target cells. And another example of long distance signaling is going to be nervous system signaling. So nervous can be both local and long distance. Um, long distance would be like a transmission going from your brain all the way to your toe. That would be the long distance, like big picture. Within that long distance big picture system, you have got the short distance synaptic clefts that we just talked about. Final thing for the day, there are three steps to essentially to cell signaling. I'm going to go through these in depth in another video, but here's a quick overview. Reception. This is where the signal molecule binds to the receptor. The signal molecule is specific to the receptor, so lock and key, proteins working together like we always talk about. Right there in your picture, you can see a signal molecule on the outside of the cell binding to a receptor on the cell membrane. Once the signal molecule binds to the receptor, it causes some sort of change in that receptor, and the receptor starts a transduction pathway. And what that is is a series of molecules that relay the message. So this guy would be activated by your signal molecule, it would cause a change in this molecule, which would cause a change in this molecule, and a change in that molecule. So this series of molecules is a signal transduction pathway. These guys are known as second messengers because they are the second part of the message, I guess, and they act on each other in a transduction pathway. And finally, the end is the response. So when that transduction pathway has run its course, the final molecule in it will cause some sort of response in the cell. Now, that response could be causing an enzyme to become active, it could be causing a structural protein to move, it could be causing a gene regulatory protein to cause a gene to create more copies of a certain protein. There are hundreds of thousands of responses that could be, I guess, resulting from the signal transduction pathway. So know those three steps, reception, transduction, response. We'll talk about them more in our next video. Until then, I hope that this gave you a little foundation that you can build on as we go forward. Thanks for hanging out with us on the Lab 207 webcast. I'll see you again. Have a good day.